Hello, welcome back. Today in this uh, video, let us see exclusive uh, regarding uh, Execute Pipeline activity uh, in Azure Data Factory. So as you might be knowing uh, in the previous videos also, we are keeping keep on uh, explaining. We have taken each and every activity in Azure Data Factory and we are explaining one by one in detail. Similarly, Execute Pipeline is also one of the uh, activity in Azure Data Factory. So let us take this and uh, explore uh, when we'll be using this and uh, what exactly as, uh, Execute Pipeline activity mean. So uh, regarding this, uh, the, regarding this, uh, we will see with a demo. So before uh, proceeding, if you are uh, new to this channel and haven't uh, subscribed for this channel, uh, please to subscribe for this channel and also press bell button for instant notification. Let's get started. So as you can see, execute pipeline uh, is an uh, activity in Azure Data Factory, which will be used uh, to basically trigger another pipeline from a main activity uh, from the main pipeline suppose uh, you want to create a uh, you want to call a sub pipeline right it is just like uh, you are passing the control to the another pipeline uh, from the main pipeline so in that case uh, how exactly it looks is uh, there will be a master pipeline and this master pipeline will be calling will be calling the child pipeline so the, i mean in that case as in those scenarios where we would need to create this hierarchy of pipelines uh, uh, basically for the orchestration purpose or something right so in that case uh, we will be using this kind of uh, uh, execute pipeline activity and uh, this will be basically, I mean, why do we separate master child, right? So based on the functionality, suppose in the main main pipeline, you want to do some, uh, I mean, you want to get the configuration details. And in the child pipeline, uh, you want to actually copy the data, right? So these are two logically uh, different things. I mean, the functionally main main uh, pipeline is getting the configuration details, but uh, the child pipeline, and then it, will, it is giving uh, the details to child pipeline and the child pipeline is, will actually do the, do the copy uh, activity thing. So that's where they are logically uh, doing a uh, different things, right? So that's where uh, uh, we call it as a logically separate pipelines to create them. We'll be using execute pipeline activity. And uh, in, in Azure Data Factory also, uh, there are some limitations uh, um, in case uh, in future uh, Microsoft might fix them, but uh, you cannot create loop inside loop, uh, right? So in, in those cases, uh, uh, we can use make use of ex uh, execute uh, pipeline activity. So that what we can do is if you if have a scenario of creating a for loop inside for loop again, so one for loop you keep in a master uh, pipeline and another pipeline, another for each loop you can keep, keep in the child pipeline. So you can call from the master uh, pipeline, you can call the child pipeline from the one for loop activity. So in that way, you are uh, um, going through that limitation, going out of that limitation and uh, still uh, uh, still you will be implementing for loop inside for loop activity so in such, such a limitation so we might also use the execute pipeline activity and uh, as part of the demo uh, we will execute and see how exactly the execute pipeline activity will work and what are the different options okay and how do we pass uh, most importantly how do we pass the pipeline parameter from the master pipeline to the child pipeline and also let us see some uh, real-time use cases uh, by executing it uh, how exactly the master child relationship uh, looks like so let's get started with the demo now. So as you can see, I am in the Azure Data Factory uh, pipeline uh, screen. So I'm just uh, going to create a PL underscore uh, master. And uh, I'll create one more pipeline, which will be called as PL underscore child. So as you can see, the my intention is to call uh, this child pipeline from the master pipeline. So how do we do that? So from the master pipeline, if I'm calling child pipeline, so I have to make use of execute pipeline. So this is a execute pipeline activity that we are discussing about. And uh, like if you go to the settings, uh, it will ask you the which pipeline that we want to execute as a child. So I want to execute as a child this PL underscore child. And uh, so there is an option like wait on completion. So uh, currently we are uh, making it check. If you uncheck it, it doesn't wait on completion. And uh, if I just debug, uh, so it says the child activity should have at least one activity. So that is the process. I mean, any any pipeline uh, in the data factory should have at least one activity. So just to uh, create one activity, I'm just creating a, just uh, adding a wait activity. So, so to just see, execute and see this. So our intention to show here is uh, how can we call the one pipeline from the another pipeline, right? So as you can uh, just refresh here, it is uh, succeeded. And uh, if you click on the output, uh, it will it will show you one more uh, link basically with the pipeline run ID. So this is a pipeline run ID of the child. So if you see the pipeline run ID of the parent is different. So let us uh, kind of uh, show you that. So if, if you can see the pipeline run ID of parent is something like 639 or something, right? 
and if i just uh, go to here output of this uh, execute pipeline activity and it shows the pipeline run id is different this pipeline run id is a specific of the child activity and uh, you can click on this once you click on this it will take take you to the output of this uh, child activity and it shows uh, what has been executed at that uh, pipeline level so as you can see this wait activity is executed but uh, one thing is uh, from the master output itself you cannot uh, see what has been executed in child if you want to see the activities the details of activity which is executed in child you have to go to child activity i mean you have to navigate to child activity through this uh, pipeline only you cannot just go and uh, directly go and see here so what you need to do is uh, you need to navigate from here because it is giving the pipeline run id right so you have to click on the run id and then you have to go to the child if you directly go to the child you might not be able to uh, get that uh, output what has been executed so this is the very basic uh, demo right how do we call one activity from another activity so this is what we call it as a master child activity and uh, let's say for example uh, we will uh, see like uh, how do we pass the parameters so i'll take uh, just a param1 as uh, one of the parameter in the child so once i uh, just once i create a pipeline parameter in the child and if i go to the master right and click here this uh, pa parameter if you see it has automatically it has popped up and i cannot trigger now because i need to pass something to this value if i don't pass anything to this value it will take the default value which is black so let us see what happens so it is succeeded but uh, as you can see if i uh, go to this and if i see this uh, uh, like there is a at the rate symbol which will display all the parameters so it is not uh, having any parameters now because we have not sent any parameters to it okay so let us uh, send a few parameter right like i'll just uh, send as test okay and then debug in the child activity it should be passed to the child activity now so let us execute this and uh, if i navigate through this to this as you can see the parameter it is showing value test and this parameter value i can utilize within the pipeline anywhere okay so if i want to show you that so just i can take a set variable to just uh, set that uh, pipeline so we need to create one variable variable here like var1 is of string type and then this var1 i'll assign to the pipeline parameter right so this pipeline parameter is coming from where it is coming from master okay so now let us debug this and see what exactly we are getting in the set variable of the child so whatever we pass in this master right we are passing test so the same has to be set to the variable inside the child so let us see that so as it is succeeded now uh, i can click on this output and navigate again so once i come here in the output i can see var1 is set to the test value so this is how we pass uh, the parameters pipeline parameters from the master to child you can pass any any kind of parameter currently i'm passing just a string but you can uh, whatever parameters you are creating here right at a pipeline level so might be of array type it may be of bool type so whatever you create it so the same data type uh, related parameter you have to uh, pass it from here in the from the master yeah uh, now let us take a real time uh, example of uh, this hierarchy how we can establish the hierarchy using uh, get metadata activity dynamically we can call the child pipelines uh, so as you can see uh, we are using a for each loop and this for each loop uh, as you are aware it will always take a array value so it can take a array value from a pipeline parameter array value from uh, say lookup so if you are uh, if you can see the previous uh, videos uh, related to lookup and short procedure uh, we have already explained how that uh, lookup activity will work and lookup activity will give uh, the configuration details to the next uh, subsequent activities in the format of array so currently to make it a little simpler we have uh, taken the pipeline parameters and also we want to show how the pipeline parameters work so that is the reason so we have taken pipeline parameters array otherwise you can keep a lookup here which will get these details from the configuration table or configuration file as explained in the previous videos related to lookup in the same playlist and that uh, output of that lookup will be the same like similarly it will be like array and uh, so currently we will pass this array value as you can see in the settings uh, we are taking this pipeline parameter as a uh, settings and uh, if you go inside uh, we are calling the execute pipeline so basically uh, like if you uh, like if you, like uh, if you talk about the this uh, copy activity so our intention is in this uh, demo is to copy the two tables that is recipe table as you can see we are passing two tables here recipe and customer v2 so these two tables uh, we want to copy from sql to blob storage from sql to blob storage in the sense the blob storage will be a no sql format we are we want to store that in a file format in the blob these two tables data uh, to do that as you know i mean you might ask me directly inside for each loop why can't i why can't i place the copy activity so similarly we have done in the previous videos we can do it but here our intention is to show 
how exactly the master child relationship works in the real time uh, projects right so as you can see now in the for each loop inside for each loop uh, we have placed the execute pipeline activity that means uh, it will be calling uh, the child item uh, how many times the number of times the array the number of elements in the array currently we have two elements right this for each is called two times and this execute pipeline that is child activity will be called two times and inside child activity we are just placing the copy activity which will uh, do, which will actually do the copy copying uh, from source to target source to sync but the main important thing here is to notice uh, when we are calling this uh, child pipeline from triggering the child pipeline from the master pipeline we have to parameterize uh, we have to send the parameters so which is expected in the child as you can see the child uh, pipeline we can see in the pipeline the parameter level we have defined a something called a stable which is a string and uh, so the same parameter will be asked when we are triggering this pipeline as you can see the table and i am passing uh, the item here item is nothing but the current execution so for the first execution when it is executing first time uh, it will it will take the first element when it is executing second time it will take the second element so then this recipe and customer v2 will be passed as a parameter to the child and that will come as a parameter uh, as a pipeline parameter and that pipeline parameter we are linking here to the table so as you can see the important another important thing is that the data, data set also we have made it as a parameter you can see the data set also we have defined a not only para, pipeline level we have to define a uh, parameter at a data set level also like we have defined a table parameter you can uh, give any name just we have given a table as the param pipeline data set parameter and uh, we have to make this table as a dynamic by giving this same parameter here that same para parameter will be given here if you just uh, click here right so it will just you can click here and it will bring the same parameter okay so why we are doing it if you don't do that it will not be dynamic right so uh, we want to only if you parameterize anything then only it will be dynamic if you consider any programming language also if you are creating a function if you want to make that function uh, reusable uh, right so you have to make that function parameterized the same thing we are making the data set parameterized here so that uh, uh, like when we are calling from the child this data set we will be passing first time it will be recipe second time it will be customer v2 so like that uh, in in the sync also we are uh, giving the file name as a same uh, pipeline parameter which we passed from master so now let us try to execute and see how exactly it will uh, so before that as you can see the source uh, we have two tables one is a recipe table right uh, one is recipe table as you can see just uh, if i do select star i'm just getting a few records here and another one is customer v2 table so from this uh, sql db uh, like there are two tables in the sql db and i want to get this data and push it to the blob container in this uh, blob container i want to push these files so in this location basically right so as a file format definitely and uh, to do that if i now the my pipeline is my, since my pipeline is ready if i just trigger it so and uh, i can give uh, maybe one one table here or 10 table here so that uh, dynamically we can give so that is advantage of uh, creating this for each loop and uh, giving the copy activity inside for each loop because it it will be dynamic uh, in nature and to add to and to make it more hierarchical so that is the that we can do using execute pipeline activity like we have done now so basically it is executing and uh, and you can see the pipeline one is called now so as you can see pipeline one is called and we can go inside pipeline one and see what has happened so it the copy is successful and it shows how many number of rows and rows read and written and bytes read and written so that is a first pipeline but we are expecting two pipeline to get triggered and two are also successful now and if i just go back to the container and if i refresh this we'll be able to see uh, two pipelines uh, so sorry uh, two files which are copied just now and uh, so that's the advantage of using for each loop but uh, the question might be why you, uh, why are we making this complicated like uh, why are we having master child kind of uh, why can't we just place this copy activity inside this uh, for each loop which will actually does the same thing the answer is uh, definitely yes we can do it but uh, thinking about a real time projects like uh, if there is a complex uh, operations or code if you are uh, if it is having if your master pipeline is having some audit related details you want to do some error handling and you want to do a complete end to end orchestration there might be 15 to 20 activities in the master pipeline and uh, in the same pipeline if you add copy activity also it it might add the complexity and uh, it might not not look more modular so the intention is uh, here if you are calling a child pipeline and all uh, making it more hierarchical and more modular in nature so if you are uh, if you are designing a complex pipeline in that case uh, it looks actually uh, sophisticated and good uh, and it looks more modular so that is the whole intention of uh, using the uh, master child kind of hierarchy so hope this is uh, useful thanks for watching